G'day, it's Nigel here. I've just got a quick lesson for you today. I really wanted to share this with you because I know that all of us want to get a better sound on saxophone, but we often don't know what to practice. And this exercise I'm going to show you today is without a doubt my favorite go-to warm-up that boosts my sound. And I can tell you, if you practice this exercise, you will get a better sound definitely straight away. And if you do it every day, then you'll be amazed at the progress you'll see over the coming weeks and months. Okay, it's a really simple exercise. This is a great lead into some of the other overtone exercises. <laughs> ah, I said that word overtone. Don't panic. It's not as scary as you think. This is actually really easy. And even if you're pretty new to saxophone, I think you'll enjoy working through this simple exercise. <laughs> Rightio, so just before we get started, there is a PDF for you. It's dead simple. It's really just a guide, but you can get it for free from our locker. That's where we keep all of our free resources. I'll put the link down below, or you can just go to the courses page of our website, saxschoolonline.com. Download it, stick it on your music stand. Then you can use it in your daily practice from, from now on. Okay, so let's get started by looking at what this exercise is all about. Yes, it is overtones, but really simply, all we're doing is trying to train ourselves with the very first couple of overtones to get that overtone control in our throat and our embouchure. So it's really, really easy to get started with. We're gonna start with a low B flat. Now, if you're not familiar with the low B flat, what we're talking about is using all of our fingers. I've got the tenor sax in my hand today, but this is the same for alto or soprano or barry sax. So low B flat is all six fingers, one, two, three, four, five, six, a low C key here, and reaching right around with our left pinky, it's our bottom B flat key there. So it's the low B flat, but really what we're going to do is try and get different sounds out by putting our B flat down. Now, if you're brand new to overtones, an overtone is simply pulling out a different part of the sound by playing a fundamental note. In this case, we're gonna talk about the low B flat. And did you know that when you play the low B flat, we hear the low B flat, but there's all these other notes in there as well. In fact, it's the octave B flat, the octave F, the second octave B flat, and so forth, right up into the stratosphere. So let's get started with the very first steps of this exercise. Okay, so this looks complicated, but it's actually really simple. Let me show you how it works. We're gonna start by playing the middle B flat. So I'm using my first finger on the B and the B flat key, no octave key. We're gonna play that note, and then I'm going to put my fingers down for low B flat, but try to still get that middle B flat sound. So when you're playing the middle B flat, I want you to hear it in your mind. Think about how it sounds and how it feels. And then when we go down to the low B flat, We've got to try and match that sound. Have a listen to this. How'd you get on with that? Are you able to do it? That first one is generally pretty easy. So if you're struggling to get it, maybe getting some wobbly sounds in there, just think about what's going on with your throat here and also revisit whether you can hear that B flat, the middle B flat, as you're fingering the low B flat. You really gotta try and imagine that middle B flat. That's a pretty easy first step and a lot of us get that first overtone without even trying. But let's talk about the next step. So you can see the next bar, we're now going from the F, the octave F. So I've got one, two, three, and my F key, and my octave key on here. And then we're gonna play that F, and then go to the low B flat and try and keep that F sound going. Have a listen. Okay, so you might have noticed that when I went to the overtone F, so with my low B flat fingerings down, the overtone F was quite sharp. So I really had to adjust my embouchure here to try and bring the pitch back down. And there's a pro tip in there for you too. What I'd really suggest you do is you get your tuner app up on your phone and you have that in front of you down here. I've got mine so I can see it. And then you try and match the tuning of the overtone note to the standard note. Really, really important. And at the start, you may be wildly out of tune. You might be quite sharp. Uh, that's okay just means that you've got to adjust your, the shape of your mouth here. So maybe dropping your jaw a little bit, opening up the back of your throat, trying to get that pitch exactly the same. Okay, let's try the third step. And this is a little bit harder, but have a go and see if you can, uh, if you can get this one out. So we're gonna do the second octave B flat now. So I've got my B finger on my B flat key. I've also got my octave key on. I'm gonna play that second octave B flat, and then I'm gonna change to the low B flat fingering and really try and see if I can still hit that high B flat. Here we go. Now, 
if you're pretty new to this, you might find that you start to get some really horrible wobbly sounds like this. <laughs> That's really, really normal. We just need to adjust the shape of our mouth. One good way to think about this, well, I'll give you two good ways, actually. The first way is to think about the pitch as if you're singing it. Can you sing that high B flat? Think about the shape of your throat as you're going up there. That can really help some of my students in sax school to get that high B flat out. Another thing that I find really helps is to experiment with the shape of the back of your tongue. So for me, I find that I'm raising the back of my tongue and kind of going a bit higher in my voice at the back here. And that really helps to get that overtone out too. So have an experiment with those two techniques and see which one works for you. So what we need to do now is to put that all into one long exercise. The key here is to go really, really slowly. So I'm gonna start at the beginning. If you got your sax, grab your sax and try it with me. I'm gonna play the first note and then go to the overtone and just stay on each note until it's in tune and I feel comfortable with the sound. Then I'll move on to the next step, and then the next step, and so forth through the line. Okay, grab your sax, let's have a go at this together. Okay, how'd you get on with that? If it's your first time doing this, you might have found that a bit challenging, but that's okay. Even if you can just get the first overtone and the second overtone, that's a massive win and you should be really proud of yourself. The most important thing here is doing this consistently and every time trying to get a slightly better sound on your saxophone, slightly get, trying to get it slightly better in tune as well. The more that you do this, you'll be absolutely amazed at how it opens up your sound when you go back to playing normal melodies. It really makes a big difference. Okay, just before we finish, I wanna show you two more steps that you can do with this exercise to really take it to the next level. Okay, so you might have guessed that we can take this exercise and we can then move it up to a B natural and use the B natural as our fundamental, in other words, that's the sort of root note that everything's based upon, and work up in the same order. So now we're going from middle B to putting our low B fingers down. And just a reminder of low B, we've got one, two, three, one, two, three. We've got a C key, and now we've got the middle key over here for low B, okay? So B, and then overtone B, F sharp, overtone B, uh, overtone F sharp rather, and then high B, and then the overtone high B. So let's try playing through that now as with using the B as the overtone. If you've got your sax, grab it and let's have a go at playing this together and see how we get on. Here we go. So you can see I don't get it perfect every time either. And there's a couple of notes in there that I'd want to work on a bit more just to get that tuning right and to also make them a little bit more consistent so that I can hit them and they come out straight away. Always when that happens, you know, it comes down to your thinking. Am I thinking clearly about where that note is? Can I hear it? Can I feel it in my body before I even go to the overtone? Okay, and the last step, let's have a look at that. Yeah, you probably already guessed it. We can also do this pattern based on C as a fundamental. So one, two, three, one, two, three, and a low key down here. So using C as a fundamental, we're gonna go to middle C, then octave, overtone C, octave G, then the overtone octave G, high C, and the overtone high C. Okay, grab your sax, let's have a go at this one. I think this is a little bit more challenging, but have a go and let's see how we get on with it. Here we go.
I hope you enjoy this exercise. The most important thing I want you to take away from today is that overtones can be fun. They don't need to be really difficult. And even working on those first two or three overtones in the series is going to do massive things for your tone quality. So wherever you're at with your playing, just work on the ones that feel comfortable for you. And if you focus on consistency and intonation, then you are going to get the most benefit out of this exercise. There's a lot more to talk about with overtones. And inside our SAC School membership, we talk a lot about overtones and help our members to really reach up into the altissimo range of the saxophone by using altissimo overtone exercises. And there's all sorts of things you can do from working on your flexibility between those notes, making up melodies with them, using them as expressive things in your improvising that sound really, really cool. You hear guys like Michael Brecker do this. But these are all steps we can work toward. And if you're a member of Sax School Pro, then you can definitely dig into that inside the members area. And by the way, if you want to find out a bit more about Sax School Pro, which is what I do, we've got thousands of members all around the world who are working through our lessons with us and seeing great results. There's a 14-day trial running as I'm filming this, and there's a link down below. <laughs> So the next steps for you really are to grab that worksheet and put this into action in your daily practice routine. Remember, you're only going to see the benefit from this if you actually use this in your practice. So make sure you do grab this worksheet and then at least commit to the next couple of weeks of trying this every single day. And then let me know in a comment how you get along with it. And then go check out this lesson next where I dig a little bit deeper into overtones and show you a couple of other exercises which I think you'll really enjoy.